Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Karl Merck. I'm a researcher in psychology specialized in the ethical challenges of using AI in mental health and in healthcare in general. I'm also the co-director of FARI AI for the Common Code Institute, a joint initiative of two universities here in Brussels. Hi, everybody. I'm Maxime Ducré. I'm a dentist and professor in the University of Lyon in dentistry and in postodontic dentistry. Uh, and today we're going to try together to discuss this question, how your teeth, your smile and AI ethics are related. These concepts and notions may seem completely separate, but we will try to see how they are indeed connected. As you know very well, AI data and robotics are increasingly used in healthcare and are transforming the field. Dental medicine as well is now deeply impacted. And in the context of what we could call an enthusiastic adoption with many promises and hopes, we are asking a question today, are we being cautious enough? Are your dentists, health authorities, companies, professionals aware of the inherent challenges, legal, technical, scientific, that might come with these technologies? Okay, so let's first discuss about the digital transformation that we have in dentistry. So on, on my side, as a dentist, I have more and more devices that are proposed to change, my, to change my practice, but there is also some tools that are proposed uh, for the patient to improve the health. So as you can see here, uh, as a dentist, we have now a device that is called intraoral scanner and that we can put in the mouse to register the form of the teeth. And you can also know that uh, there is already some AI tool that are present inside the, this intraoral scanner to improve the scan but there is uh, also some software that could be proposed to detect the decay in the, in the mouse. Uh, there is also a new tool uh, that is proposed that is called the uh, CBCT, and it's, it's able to, to register all the bone and the teeth that we have in the mouse. And uh, thanks to my colleague, uh, the professor Renil Jacob from the University of K. Levin, you can see here that artificial intelligence could help to segment the different bone and the teeth that could help to prevent any risk during the, the clinical intervention. And uh, the last thing, it's about the prostodontic laboratory, uh, because we have a couple of people that help the dentist to create specifically some prothesis and artificial intelligence, it's proposed, for example, here to uh, create new smile, smile design, but there is also software that proposes automatic uh, creation of the removal partial denture using artificial intelligence. And specifically to the smile design, we can see here on this video a software that is able to propose automatically and simu simultaneously the, the new conception and new smile to the patient on the iPad. But beyond the wow effect, I think there is a couple of questions that we have to discuss. And together with Carl and uh, the rest of the team, we were interested about all the questions, uh, the ethical questions uh, that could be related to the development of artificial intelligence in dentistry and what we observed. And we have more and more software, more and more solutions that are proposed and uh, it's about all the clinical application that we have in the field of dentistry. And as you can see here, uh, specifically uh, in the field of dentistry, we have a couple of application like prevention, diagnostic and couple of specialty. But we have the feeling with Carl that everything has to be organized clearly and ethics. Uh, it's something strong that could uh, surround all this application and could help to promote a strong and powerful artificial intelligence in dentistry. With new tools come new practices and also new challenges. As you might know, the field of healthcare is heavily regulated and subject to numerous guidelines, deontological rules. As health professionals or researchers, we have to follow many guidelines. AI itself also comes with its own ethical principles, dilemmas, and you might know that over 200 guidelines have been written in the past years in all sectors from all different stakeholders, from public to private, to NGOs, to international organizations. Their goal was to contribute to a responsible development of AI. AI is implicitly and supposedly requires its developers now more and more to think about the related challenges before developing or implementing AI systems. 
There might be now what we could call a contradiction, because when we investigated today's uses of AI, we also looked for mention of ethical challenges in the literature in dentistry. We really wanted to know and answer a specific question. We talk a lot about AI ethics nowadays, but are there specific challenges that AI raises when it comes to dental medicine? Is there a specificity when using this set of technologies for this application and field? Surprisingly, as you can see below, we found almost no mention of ethical issues. Therefore, we were asking ourselves a series of questions. How to explain it? What is missing? How is it possible that on one side we have 200 guidelines with many, many rules, principles, and on the other side, when we look at dentistry, we can see that all the AI papers that were published barely mention ethics. So our hypothesis is maybe that there is a lack of sensitization, maybe a lack of awareness or a lack of training more formally. Looking at the future, we are also wondering how to ensure that patients, future dentists and researchers are aware of the ethical limitations, challenges of these tools. We believe to date training are maybe not insisting enough on what does it mean to use a digital tool such as AI system when you want to use it to help people and to try to better understand health conditions. There is still a long way to go in our honest opinion. We could also think that we might are now creating a double standard because AI has so many, brings so many hopes and promises. We are maybe overlooking the ethical challenges. That could be another explanation of why we barely see the mention of ethical challenges in the AI literature in dentistry. But by comparison, when we, we expect that a doctor knows what a diagnosis tool is for and what it can and cannot measure, we also expect a contractor redoing something in your house to know which material to use, in which conditions, what are the safety hazards. We expect a mechanician to know what is an adequate repair, the appropriate tool, the advantages and downsides of some parts over others. So why are we now accepting that maybe dental researchers or practitioners are using AI without really knowing its limitations and potential challenges? That maybe leads to the question of inflated expectations when it comes to AI. As you can see on the Gartner chart and curve on the right, that we might have reached what we could call and what has been called the peak of inflated expectations. Hopes, promises were so big that we rushed to use these technologies without really looking at all the different challenges that come with them. This peak of inflated expectation could lead to several risks. The first one is a lack of information on the quality of evidence. Again, we really rushed to use these technologies and we did not really do all the proper work that goes beyond and behind to really document all the use of this technology. The second aspect is maybe that it leads to less transparency because again, we want to use this technology, we want to make experiments, we really want to try to develop applications. Maybe we don't have the time to also document and be completely transparent about everything that goes behind the scenes. And maybe the last aspect that is also critical to us is the lack of hard ethical standards can be related to a peak of inflated expectation because all the efforts and investments go into helping the development of the technology. Maybe we're not looking at how to also limit its use, how to also channel and control and regulate it. And right now we have a lack of hard ethical standards and we have what has been called soft ethics, meaning non-binding. Most of these 200 guidelines are maybe not legally enforced and are still not yet legally enforced. By not being cautious enough, we think that this could accentuate the entry into what has been called the trough of delusionment, meaning that after seeing many, many misuses of AI, we might end up also thinking, well, this is maybe disappointing and it's a disappointing technology that we may maybe steer away from. So to really seize the full potential of AI and to also understand it as a tool with its own limitation and also its own benefits, we maybe need to ask ourselves a series of AI ethics questions. So this is our proposal to you today, is to maybe try if you want to use AI in dentistry to think of a series of AI ethics questions. The first one is data handling. It's a key question. When it comes to AI systems, you always start with uh, where is the data coming from? What data will we use? But the other questions that are related to it and also AI ethics, are there third parties? Is the data of the app that you're using with your patients sold to also other uh, third parties, uh, companies and data brokers? 
Another aspect that seems far away from ethics is technical and cybersecurity. What we mean by that is there are technical questions that underline are uh, related to ethics. For instance, are we dealing with a really an AI system? What we've seen is that a lot of organizations, companies, people pretended to use AI when it was indeed something far more simple or just a regular software, but not a very set of advanced technologies. So for us, it's important to know, are we dealing with a true AI system or with something else? This might lead to completely different questions. And then in healthcare, we also have many questions that AI raises uh, that are very specific. So for instance, in the example of the smile design app that Maxim was showing, if you're being presented as a client or a patient, uh, a new vision of what your teeth could look like that looks very promising, very engaging, are you really going to buy into this expensive treatment? But ask yourself the question, what if the system was actually misleading and not doing an accurate representation or maybe doing some mistakes in the back? And what if your teeth cannot look like the representation that was shown to you by the AI system? This is a key issue here that is completely deontological, meaning that uh, it could lead to malpractice that would be legally punished. And then social issues. Uh, many systems will use, for instance, facial recognition uh, or be trained using uh, specific uh, data sets uh, from maybe related to specific populations or subgroups of the population. And we want to also ask ourselves, are there biases inherent to these data sets being used to train the AI systems used in um, dentistry? Uh, does it target vulnerable groups? Does it include them or not? These are also key questions. And finally, the most important one also to us is the question of the reliability and the efficacy and accuracy of the systems is key. Uh, we are in healthcare and we want to know, is this tool actually being efficient? And we have right now a lack of evaluation and it is actually a key problem for us from a scientific and an ethical point of view. Let's not forget sustainability is also a key aspect that we want to underline with Maxim. Sustainability is not really well considered when it comes to AI, and we still are waiting for more documentation and literature and evidence on how polluting are these AI systems. We know that training one AI system could lead to the pollution equivalent to the use of five cars across the lifespan. So we really want to know is the to, uh, are the tools that we use and develop or promote in dentistry uh, polluting and do they have an ecological impact? And these are key questions nowadays to wonder ourselves. So now we have for you uh, four key messages that we want uh, for, to synthesize for our presentation. Uh, it's our proposition. Uh, it's only based on our experience and uh, the publication that we found, but we strongly think that uh, for any field, uh, you have to identify if there is already guideline to develop uh, responsible air artificial intelligence. Uh, if you have a project uh, and if you want to start something new, uh, you have to start asking uh, what could be the societal and ethical impact of the future system or software that you, that to, that you plan to develop. Uh, you have to uh, propose more education for ethics and, for example, you can promote the Global Ethics Initiative. And finally, uh, when you want to create something new, you have to include other profile and specifically the main stakeholder uh, in the conversation to ensure that the, the proposition, the software, the, artif the new artif artificial intelligence that you want to create would be systematic and sustainable. We wanted to thank you for your attention and we wanted to show you, starting with our own research and work, that what you observe in a dent and dental medicine uh, is actually uh, bringing the question of AI ethics more and more. And we hope you enjoyed this presentation and don't hesitate to reach out to us using the two email addresses that you can now see.